I never realised that to become a jockey, you needed to be a horse first. The famous words of Arrigo Saki, the first part of Iconic's Tactics Week on the channel. We're going to look at his famous 442 from the sort of like the late 80s, early 90s, where AC Milan took over pretty much world football. We're talking mid block with a really high defensive line. It was a compact 442, 4411, with no more than 20 meters between the defenders and Marco Van Basten leading the line up front. Super compact. The idea is the ball comes in and we press and we win it back. So we've got some interesting team instructions and player instructions today. It's more about the team instructions and the player instructions rather than the player rules. I think you can actually change a few of the rules today. The rules are not as important. It's the TIs and the PIs that are going to get this looking like an Origi Saki tactic. All right, let's get into it. Any iconic tactic suggestions, put them down in the description. I'm making a list to work through over the next coming days, weeks and months. So get them down in the description and shout out as well to all the patrons on the screen right now. Your support, especially in the last two months, has been out of this world. Thank you very much for If you want the direct downloads of all the tactics from now and past tactics that I've done on the channel recently, go check out the Patreon. £3 a month supports the channel like no end. Right, this is the tactic. We're going to go through the team first, the player roles, the PIs, and then we'll look at the team instructions towards the end. So remember, we want that high line, compactness, quick transitions as well, getting the footballs into the two main boys in Rude Hullet and Marco Van Basten. Okay, sweeper keeper on attack for Gally, the goalkeeper. We're going, um, we're going on attack mainly because of the high line that we're playing. It's going to be so important that he can come in from sweeper for a few things. Basic can kind of build up, but just a higher starting position would be absolutely perfect. Into the fullbacks. Now, remember, this is sort of like the 1990s, early, sorry, late 80s as well. So fullbacks were not as adventurous as that you find today. You know, they weren't. They were sometimes tucking inside. If you look at, obviously, the tactic that I did with uh, Johan Cruyff at Barcelona, he used often fullback in sort of like wide centre-back areas. But Milan, very basic in terms of what they gave. We've just had a slight twist with one on support and one at an attack, just because we've got an inverted winger on the other side, just to give us a little bit more freedom. Obviously, the left-back role being Maldini in his early days, so he maybe just had a little bit of more energy to get around. But we're not talking wing-backs, we're talking solid full-backs. So to Sotti, full-back on support. Centre defender, on defend, we've gone Costa Curta. No playing instructions for him. Very good centre-half, alongside one of the legends of the game, Baresi. Now, there's two things... He often dribbled into midfield, so you could kind of say that he's a libero, brilliant on the ball. However, one little tweak that you could make, because of how the libero sits in the game, he often acts as a sort of like a deep line midfield, and that's not really what he did. He was a defender that brought the ball out and often covered in behind, so he'll do that no problem, but you've got an option. Libero on defend, play instruction dribble more, or... Ball playing defender on defend with the instruction dribble more. So I'm going to leave that to you. Remember what I said, the couple of rules are really flexible and that is definitely one of them. Full back on attack, you know, you could change this once again. If you want a wing, wing back on support, you could to give you a little bit more going forward. But I've just said with a full back, no player instructions. Right, into the midfield, we've got a Volante and a deep line playmaker. The Volante role is Carlo Ancelotti. He was coming into the last stages of his career, but he scored so many goals. In and around here. He did often get into the box with headers, but goals from the edge of the area, pullbacks, ball been half cleared, shooting from the edge of the area, absolutely lethal. So we've got him as a volante on support with the player instruction as well tackle harder and mark tighter. I'll explain that why in a sec. The deep line playmaker on support, Frank Rijkaard, tackle harder, mark tighter once again. Into the wide areas. Now, this is once again, I think you can have defensive wingers, you could have wide midfielders, you could have two inverted wingers, you could have wide wingers. I think this bit, pit, guys, is totally flexible until, depending on what you have in your squad. They had players like Colombo, Donadoni. I've got, to give us a little bit of balance, I've gone winger on support, Mark Titer, and then inverted winger on support, Mark Titer. It just kind of suit the Milan of today a little bit as well. So those rules are very flexible, but I would make sure you have on Mark Titer. Right, moving into the front two now, you could often see it was a 4-4-2 with sort of like Rude Hullet, but he would often be off the striker and then would make late runs into the box. So that's why I've gone Shadow Striker and it does work superbly well in FM24. With the player instructions, once again, tackle harder and mark tighter. What I'm hoping is with the Shadow Striker, it'll just help us get a compact, a compact block in. And I've got this isometrical one just because, remember, this is your shape off the ball. 
and that just looks a little bit more of a 4-4-2 rather than him in there in that central area and then the striker in there. We would generally press with a 4-4-1-1. So that's why I've gone with that, just to help us press in a 4-4-2 and get those two banks of four in and then the two in front. So that's why we've done with that with Rude Hullet. And then the striker, Marco Van Basten. No player instructions on him. But this could be an advance forward, it could be deep line forward, it could be pressing forward, target forward, whatever you've got. But because Michael Van Boston was literally a genius, he can do a little bit of everything. We've also got Rafael Leao up there for us in Milan at the moment, so he can do that role, no problem. Once again, you could probably put in Mark Titer, and this is why. So we're going to do this really compact block. As you can see, the player instructions down here that we'll go through more detail in a minute, but much higher defensive line and a mid block, and that's to get that 20 meters between the defensive line and the block. The idea with that is as well that we're so tight because it was a really intense press. What I don't want is, let's just imagine this is the opponents and we've got a really high line. What we don't want is their players, wide areas, central midfielders, even defenders to have too much on the ball, too much time on the ball and being able to knock balls in behind because we've got that high line and we're really compact. It's going to be really easy to go over us. They can't going to go through us because of our team instructions we set up. They could maybe go around us, but that's going to be easy to defend. Over the top is going to be the issue. So I'm hoping that because we've got Mark Titer on, that's going to force them to either play backwards, they'll turn into trouble and get tackled. If we're just a little bit off and give the, t the opponents maybe a second or two to get the ball out of the feet, we're going to be sort of like, susceptible to those balls in behind so that's why we've gone that to really encourage that really aggressive press when it gets into that middle third of the pitch mentality attacking it was quick transitions balls played quickly up to the front boys however we're trying to play out defense you know Berezi would get it and step in remember we've got that dribble more instruction for Berezi so we want that on standard passing directness nothing too flash in terms of shorter passing possession numbers were not that great it was about getting that ball back quickly and counter-pressing and going and counter-attacking. Higher tempo, whatever we're doing, we're moving the ball quickly, we're shifting it, we're trying to get those two key players, Hullet and Van Basten, on the ball. We're not going to slow it down and play across the back. We want to get that ball forward quickly and effectively without going too long. The attacking width have gone for narrow. Now, you might say that's weird because you're playing with wingers. However, they will still stay extremely wide, especially that right midfield. In mind, remember, my right midfield is a winger on support, but the narrow attacking width is actually to help us out of possession. Now, I know you say that we're in possession now, but what I'm thinking of is if we want to replicate that counter press and be really aggressive and getting them two banks of four in, we can do that better if we're playing narrow. Obviously, that midfield is going to have to come in, but we can do it so much better, so much more efficiently and quickly when we lose the ball if we're a little bit more narrow and that'll just see us replicate that two banks of four, 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 two, four, four, one, one, whatever you want to call it, more quicker. Everything else, once again, I think you could probably hit early crosses on. You could have these on. You could be more expressive, more disciplined, probably more disciplined to be fair for Rigo Saki. Very much a disciplinarian working hard in training and following his instructions to the letter. In transition, We've got counter press and counter. We want those quick transitions through to the front boys, as we said. We want to maybe try and hit Rude Hullet and missing out the midfield. Can we go straight into Rude Hullet at times? Counter press, you know, when the ball's lost, we're squeezing, we're pressing, we're making that pitch very condensed, very compact. So counter press on, very important. If we don't have that counter press on with our high line, it's going to give the defenders the opportunity to clip balls, midfielders clip balls over the top, and then it'll be a, a racing FM, which the striker normally wins. Distribute to the fullbacks, distribute to the centre but in particular Berezi, like you could even do distribute here, distribute to position, and then kick on, click on Berezi just to make sure you've got him. Obviously, you'll probably need a good left-sided defender in there just so they can play out from the back and take short kicks. Out of possession, there is your mid-block. Now, it's not a high press. It was high intensity, but it wasn't a high press. So not many teams in sort of like the 80s and 90s did high presses. Anyway, so we're going in mid-block with this really compact shape and fingers crossed you'll be able to then see that two banks of all really narrow, really tight together. Much more often trigger press because we want it to be really, really on it. Tight, aggressive, quick, get that ball back as quickly as we can. If we allow the team time, they're going to punish us in behind. Tackling, get stuck in, it is quick, it's aggressive. Defensive line, step up more. We're really going to try and force and get our boys as high up the pitch as possible. Trap inside, because we're going to be quite narrow, we want to try and focus that ball into the middle as much as we possibly can. Does that make sense? Because we're going to be narrow. We don't want that. Weaknesses potentially might be to go around. So we're going to try and just get our strikers just to show them into that midfield where we can bite and get the ball back. 
And then I've done cross engagement. I've done stop crosses. Now I've watched a couple of games. So there's nothing to say that it's a it's a tactical thing. But I'm just thinking of fullbacks in that era, the 80s and 90s. I imagine the one thing you were taught growing up was do, and even when I was taught growing up, you don't allow crosses into the box. You can by all means take that off. It's not going to completely make your Saki tactic fold. It's just a nice personal preference. And I would say it's probably relevant and realistic to the role of a fullback during that period. Okay, more importantly now, and one little one, and one little thing before we finish, opposition instructions. Trigger press, goalkeeper, no. Click that off. Because we don't want our strikers going and chasing the goalkeeper and then we lose that compactness. If the striker goes off 20 yards in front to close down the goalie, our shape, our compactness, remember we're after that mid-block, mid -block, but an intense mid-block. And we may lose that if we have the striker in particular going and closing down the goalkeeper. An absolute overkill would be getting all these midfielders, you know, tight marking. But because we've got it in the player instructions, what I've seen in the match engine so far, absolutely fine. And before we finish... Just a couple of little heat maps. As you can see, quite a narrow shape. Now, we are average positions. We have had a little bit more of the ball. 59% possession against Verona. And once again, you can see really high line, but not overly aggressive with the press. Our 2-2 draw in Milan. They scored 89 and 90 plus 5. But look at that game. Look at that game. Not much in terms of possession. Look, 23 shots. They had two shots. I've just realised they've had two shots. All my life. Showing you everything you need to get Saki going in FM24. I think it works superbly well. And remember, don't worry about the rules so much. It's all about those team instructions and player instructions. 